All right, I'm back. In um, in this video, I'm going to be talking about um, layer textures and canvas textures and how they're different and how you can use them. So let's just start with uh, the fact of the, the canvas texture. So right now, this canvas is really pretty blank. It doesn't have much going on. And I'm just going to go to View Canvas Settings. And I'm going to pick watercolors as the, um, the texture for the canvas. And you can see now I have uh, a very nice, you know, bumpy watercolor looking um, canvas. So that works out nicely. But I think you can also see it doesn't have, it's not actually directly affecting my experience of um, texture. It's, it's really a visual representation so of what watercolor looks like. And if I was painting on the canvas layer, this would affect it. But I'm not. I'm painting on one of the many other layers that we have available. So what we're going to do instead is use the very powerful layer textures that ArtRage has available. This is one of the things I love about ArtRage. I think it does really well. So I'm going to edit the layer texture. And I'm going to pick Toothy. I found this in the ArtRage forms and I liked it. Um, and I'm going to increase the roughness and the grain size and whatever you might pick, for example, the watercolor paper, you know, you, you'll see in this preview window, it's going to get rougher, grain size gets bigger, chunkier, whatever you want. If it gets too big or too rough, it's, it's uh, going to look a little awkward. But this will be a good start. So what does this mean? in terms of you know my painting experience in art rate well mostly what it means is i can now get some interesting effects um, in terms of what i call the rim textures so these pieces along the edge and whatnot um, in art rage and it looks nice to me very nice um, and you can get pretty far now with that. So what I'm going to do, for example, is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn my loading down low. I'm going to turn my thinners down low. That's going to allow, basically, the brush is going to run out of pigment quickly. It's not loaded with a lot of pigment. And as it runs out of pigment, um, the brush will interact more with the layer texture that we chose. So ArtRage doesn't have um, the opportunity, doesn't give us the opportunity to do bristly work in ArtRage yet, but by doing this technique we're going to get some really um, pretty, um, by my standards, impressive digital work in terms of uh, dry brush work. So I'm going to sweep this around and I'm just going to go around the edges of where I think Hey, if I was painting, perhaps I'd have some sort of, um, you know, a bristly, interesting bristly work. And now I'm going to zoom back out, and suddenly that looks much, much more interesting to me. So this layer texture is an exceptionally useful tool, and you should be using it <laughs> a, lot, a lot, in my opinion. Um, and it's just, you know, all the time you can be using this to really good effects. Now, you might not want it always to look that bristly, right? So I might put the loading back up, and now I can, you know, paint much longer. Similarly, I might think, you know, I'm done with uh, this sort of rough technique, right? Like the brush was drying out. I want it to look normal again. So what I'm going to do is I, oh, I up to the loading setting. I changed the layer texture to be less rough, and now my rim, what I call the rim texture, looks pretty normal. It's not uh, quite so dry. It just looks like the edge of a brush painting. So, you know, that's something to think about in terms of how you want to use the edit layer texture function um, to get interesting effects in terms of dry brush work. The second thing I wanted to show you is you need to really think about using your blender. So I'm going to go into these presets. 
I really like the Hard Whip Blender and I like Harsh Chaos. I think these are both nice blenders. I think they do well. So I'm on Hard Whip Blender now. And what I'm going to do is I just think it's worth pulling paint past the lines of your line work. <clears throat> I feel like sometimes working digitally um, gives people too much control or they have the opportunity for too much to control. And um, I think it's really useful in terms of creating interesting artwork that's supposed to be emulating, uh, you know, natural media work to think about um, introducing deliberately some elements of, um, you know, for lack of a better term, chaos or some elements of chance into your painting that help you um, exit your line drawing and start uh, really putting down paint um, with some sort of vivacity and freedom in terms of your brush strokes the way it would be if you were painting with wet watercolors. Sometimes I see th people paint um, and it's almost as if they're using a bucket tool you know to, to fill inside of the lines of something um, instead of really just painting with a paintbrush and allowing for you know little inconsistencies that make it human this nose for example that I didn't quite you know fit inside the line exactly the same thing for this sort of ear you know and this tail with the sweeping motion of the tail or that I didn't paint this foot a lot of those things um, are going to help make your watercolor look more like natural media watercolor. So I bring in the blenders and I bring in the dry brushwork to really help build that. The next thing I'm going to show you is locking the transparency. So I've locked the transparency on the layer that I've been painting on. And this isn't like locking your layer in Photoshop where you can't do anything else on this layer. Instead what it allows us to do is um, only put paint on that layer where we've already put paint on that layer. Now, why is this useful? Well, in ArtRage, it becomes useful because we have the opportunity to now uh, simulate the experience of basically using a, a wet layer of watercolors the way it would normally be and um, dropping some new color in to that wet layer, just as if I had a wet layer that I hadn't blown dry yet or hadn't you know, dried on its own, and I dropped some color into it, and wherever it was already wet, um, you know, that's where the pigment could expand to. And if it wasn't wet yet, then it wouldn't go in that spot because, you know, um, basically surface tension is going to keep it where we want it to go. So, you know, wherever I go now, you can see it's not going past um, this cat where I've already done it. That's pretty interesting to me and I think it provides some really interesting opportunities for us to uh, play with to play with you know essentially getting a good effect um, and simulating certain painting and techniques that one might have with um, natural media watercolors. Now the other thing you can see I'm doing here is I'm actually blending with the transparency still locked, right? But what this really starts doing is pushing the watercolors around in interesting ways. So it, it bumps up against essentially the edge and then bounces back and pushes that water and pushes that that water or that pigment around and begins to introduce chance into your image a little bit. So using your lock transparency can provide interesting opportunities to um, you know play basically and create something that has a little bit of more color or textural interest compared to um, really just sort of painting within the lines so to speak so that's it for now those are some of the basic um, techniques I might use for dry work um, dry brush work or with uh, simulating some wet watercolor work by either one locking you know changing my settings and um, come on presets how about settings changing my settings not my stencils 
and reducing the loading and then playing with the edit layer texture function to create interesting bristly work or um, using my blenders and pushing the pigment outside of the existing um, image or um, additionally locking the transparency on a layer and then dropping new color into the existing layer so that basically the paint that you've already placed is going to be guiding basically the parameters of where that new color can can go so between that and using your blenders with the lock transparency you can get some interesting effects that really begin to simulate very quickly um, a lot of what one might do if one was painting with real watercolors so um, I guess that's it for now and I'll see you in the next video